Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hey, health junkies. I was so excited after my sports medicine acupuncture certification course that I just started this last week that I had to do a podcast on what blew my mind. And it's the correction of flat feet. And Matt Callison, who is the founder and head of the Sports Medicine Acupuncture Certificate Program, he's amazing. And so I just can't help but share the word on how acupuncture can lift arches and help folks that are suffering with chronic issues related to their flat feet. So I hope that you guys like this podcast. Let me know. I'd love to hear feedback. But if you are looking for some help, you got to go see someone who has their sports medicine acupuncture certificate who was trained by Matt Callison. Amazing stuff here, guys. Check it out. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss. In today's episode, we're going to be talking all about flat feet and how they cause a lot of issues for you and how paying attention to your feet can help you to walk better and be pain-free. I don't know how many people come to my office and I'm trying to figure out their pain and as soon as I look at their feet, I'm like, boom, there's, there's the problem. And so... Really why I want to talk about this too is that I think a lot of people don't think about acupuncture for helping with muscle imbalances and for helping to fix things like plantar fasciitis, which is an inflammation of the tissue at the bottom of the foot, and how acupuncture can actually fix flat feet in some cases. Not 100% of the cases, but a lot in the cases of when someone has what we know as acquired plantar Issues. So acquired flat feet or acquired pes planus, if you want the fancy medical term for it. Now, how do you end up with flat feet? Well, weight gain, pregnancy can cause feet to flatten out. Um, injuries can cause feet to flatten out. It just all kind of depends on what's been happening with your lifestyle. If you weren't born with flat feet and all of a sudden they're getting flatter and flatter, well, guess what? your arches are starting to collapse. We have three main arches in our foot. There's the lateral longitudinal, which is along your pinky side of the foot. And you have the medial longitudinal that is along your big toe side of your foot. That's kind of the higher arch and the one that typically does show the signs of collapse. And then the anterior transverse arch. This is the arch that is at the ball of your foot. Or more or less thinking of where you have the pads between the great toe, the big toe, and your pinky toe. That area is going to have another arch, which is known as the anterior transverse arch. Now, I'm going to be talking all about how acupuncture can help with the lateral longitudinal and the medial longitudinal arches. And the reason it can help is because we have muscles that affect those two arches the muscles that are directly in the foot, but also muscles in the lower leg that are going to affect that arch. Now, hold on, I will get there in a little bit. Just wanna kinda talk through a couple other things relative to the feet. Now, when we look at our feet and we're kinda standing up, there's an interesting component in terms of what the Achilles tendon does. Now, for most people, it should go just straight down and attached to your heel, known as the calcaneus. That's like a normal heel. But there's something called a helvings sign. This is the inward bowing of your Achilles tendon. And this is common for folks that have collapse of their arch. Now in the runner's world, you'll often hear excessive pronation. That's the term for basically you have no arch and you are not running proper at all because if you have a collapsed arch how do you have that spring that's what those longitudinal and medial arches are there for they help you weight bear but they also help you get that spring and stabilization in your step and so you want to have some arch and this is why we have orthotics and things of that nature to help to correct this but wouldn't it be cool if you could correct it without having to use orthotics 
Now, I'm not saying in every case you can get away with that, but there are cases in which you can. And I have seen the arches actually change and lift with acupuncture. So hear me out. I'm going to keep going through this. If you're kind of thinking, oh, whatever, this is so woo-woo, I kind of thought the same, to be honest. And as soon as I saw it happen in a demonstration in a conference, I was blown away. And now I've done it a couple times in my practice, and I'm blown away too. This really does work. Your body does respond to acupuncture for helping to lift the arches. And don't worry, I'm going to tell you how it happens because right now it's, it's probably sounds like it might be magical. It's not magical. I mean, the results are kind of magical, but there is a science behind it. Now, ladies, anyone out there have a bump in their Achilles tendon? One that's just kind of if you feel your heel and you slide your finger up that tendon. And by the way, for those of you that don't know anatomy, here I am throwing out Achilles tendon. Maybe you don't know what that is. It is the tendon that attaches from your calves, your muscles, your gastrocs, and your soleus. So these are your muscles in your lower leg. It attaches into your heel. And that's that big tendon um, that's attaching into your heel. It's called Achilles tendon. And ladies might have a bump about three to five inches up from the heel. And that's a sign of wear and tear to that Achilles tendon and what happens is your body will keep trying to repair that area and so you develop a callus much like you would develop a callus on your hands if you keep weightlifting or bike riding or doing something repetitively these folks are at risk for rupturing their Achilles tendon and I have seen this in guys too especially fellas that have extremely tight Achilles tendons and hamstrings and don't do anything about it. And a lot of times, unfortunately, we think about the body segmentally and we don't think about the fact that, well, if the foot doesn't move right and the hamstrings are, sorry, and the, the, the gastrocter or the lower leg muscles are super tight, well, of course, the hamstrings are going to be tight too. And so we need to be thinking about the whole chain here. So something to keep in mind. And the reason I like to do these podcasts for public service announcements too is that if you're seeing a massage therapist that's not taking into account your whole leg, you got to work on that. If you're seeing a PT that, you know, you say you have foot pain, but they're only working on your foot, you got to find somebody that's going to work on your whole leg in addition to just your foot because it's all connected. So the the moral of the story, if you take nothing away from this podcast whatsoever, start paying attention to your feet and get to working on your whole leg, not just your foot, because I'm going to talk about what is connected to that foot that is also creating this collapse of your arches. But before I do that, let's talk another thing about the calcaneus, your heel. Now, if you're an avid runner, you might get a bump on the lateral side of your heel, so the outside of your heel. And this is a common issue for folks that are leaning forward excessively while running. And chances are it's because their heel is really compressed, like stuck to their Achilles. There's no space there. There should be some space between heel, bone, and when you go up a little bit from there behind your ankle bone, On the outside of your ankle, you should feel some space in between the Achilles tendon and your ankle bone. And if it's not, it's compressed. And look at yourself in the mirror and stand straight up as best as you can and look at yourself in the mirror. Are you leaning forward? That would mean you have something called a short heel. The heel's just just compressed in from the calcaneus. It's all mashed in. You need someone to help work that out. And I'll talk about how you can do that yourself here in a little bit. But flat feet... Wow, you know, they cause a ton of problems. Knee pain, low back pain, even neck pain. I have been able to get rid of neck pain by treating the feet. A lot of common injuries due to flat feet, Achilles tears, knee, stuff like, I've seen all kinds of strains. Why? Because the more that you try to run or work out on flat feet and just walk on flat feet, the more you're sending messages up the body for wear and tear if you don't correct the feet issue hip issues in particular, my goodness. Plantar fasciitis is a big issue for folks with flat feet. You're more prone to it. If you have a practitioner who's working with you on plantar fasciitis or you're working at home and your doc's like, okay, roll your foot out with the golf ball that you put in the freezer and just keep stretching your foot, that's great, but you're never gonna solve the problem because you're not working on your calves. You have to work on your calves, you have to work on your hamstrings. It's a whole leg thing, not just the foot. So. Hang tight. I'm going to tell you why. But 
all these fallen arch issues, you know, if you weren't born with it, you can have sciatica, you could end up with hamstring, chronic hamstring strains, you could end up with an Achilles tear or even a rupture. And sadly enough, it happens. And it happens often. I see it a lot. And I see people after it's happened, unfortunately. I always wish I could see them to prevent it. But well, that's what happens. Now, another issue when I was talking about stand in front of the mirror and look at yourself in the mirror and see if your your hips are t- tilting forward, this is is literally that plantar fascia that that tissue on the bottom of your foot is pulling you forward, and so your heel is getting stuffed towards your bones of your foot, if you will, if you think of it kind of in a simple term. And when that happens, your whole positioning of your whole body is shifted off, and so you're leaning forward and your pelvis tilts forward. So take a look at yourself or put yourself in front of a mirror, stand as straight as you think you're standing and have someone take a picture of you and see if you truly are leaning forward. And then if you can't see your feet very well, have someone take a picture of your feet with you standing front on back, you know, from the back, from the front. So you can see what your feet look like and take that to your doctor, take that to your acupuncturist, take it to your massage therapist and say, Hey, what do you know about fascia work? And I'm going to give you some resources in terms of folks you can look for that can help you out big time in this department. Because massage therapists who are trained extensively in myofascial release and fascial work, super huge, extremely huge. Check out my notes um, on my on this podcast, episode 115 at drjkrausnd.com for more information on that. Also, by the way, I should mention that I'm going to list where to find acupuncturists who have been trained to help with lifting arches and that's sportsmedicineacupuncture.com. It's a certificate program that you have to go through and that's what I've started. I'm going to the program. I was blown away by my conference and decided, yeah, I need to learn how to do this stuff even more. And since I've learned in my practice that it is quite effective and it's not just magic, I'm telling you, that's why I'm talking about it today. So that being said, let's talk about these progressive collapsed arches. I talked about how it happened with weight gain and how it talked about muscle weakness, but I didn't get into that muscle weakness. Now we have two muscles that are kind of the slings of the foot. There's one called the anterior tibialis and there's one called the posterior tibialis. These muscles are involved in helping with foot and ankle movement. So once again, if you've ever had an ankle sprain and then your foot collapsed not too long after that, this is something that really needs to get worked on these muscles that are in your calf. Now, the anterior tibialis is really the muscle that if you look at your lower leg and and you're and you're looking at your toes all the way down, it's the muscle right in the front, your shin. Your shin muscle, if you will. And posterior tibialis is deep to your gastrox, so the muscles you feel on the back of your calf and underneath it, there's soleus, and then tibialis posterior is underneath there. In fact, fun little tidbit, you can find tibialis posterior if you feel on your leg, on the inside of your tibia, so the inside of your shin bone, go to the inside of your leg and go, oh, I don't know, go about six inches below the knee and start pressing around. See if you get any sore spots in there. If you find some sore spots in there and you have flat feet, guess what? That's your tibialis posterior motor point. So that's the point that can help you to release that muscle tension. And that's where we'd needle with an acupuncture needle. So you can affect the slings. So anterior tibialis and posterior tibialis, these two muscles, you can affect the slings of the arch and you can help to lift them. And I've seen it, it's pretty darn cool in my office and as a demonstration at a conference. So something to think about if your practitioner, say you see an acupuncturist already and they're not working on that, time to find someone that knows what they're doing. And go to my notes, drjkrausnd.com, episode 115, and get a look at the website for sports medicine acupuncture and find someone that does know what's up. Um... The other side of this is that your foot can get locked as well. And I don't know how many people come to my office and I try to move their foot and it's just crunchy and hard and 
it doesn't move at all. So if you have the ability right now at home or wherever you're at to take a look and see how well you can bend your foot, meaning can you move your toes? And I don't mean just like wiggle your toes. I mean, take your hand on either side of your foot and pull it up and down a little bit, kind of rock it a little bit. See if you can move your metatarsals. Those are your long bones of your foot. If those move, then okay, that's great. If they don't move so well and it feels like everything's gunked up in there, that is not a good sign. We're going to work on that. Also, your ankle. Move your ankle around. How well does your ankle move? Does it crack? Can you move it inward? So like, can you, you turn it in? Can you turn it out? Can you put your toes to the ceiling? Can you put your toes to the floor? If it feels like one of those movements is restricted, then your ankle could be part of the problem too. So these slings being the muscles of your calves, these are huge to work on. And if you know that you already always have tight calves, then you know you got to be working on those. And especially if you have plantar fasciitis already, you got to be working on your calves. The next step is hamstrings, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So now that you've looked at your foot and you've looked at your calf, I want you to go back to the bottom of your foot. Anyone who has traditional plantar fasciitis is going to have some pain on the inside of the heel. And so on the bottom of the foot, kind of towards the medial inside of the heel, as you kind of wrap your finger around and start to head towards where your arch should be if you don't have one or if you do have an arch. And oftentimes you, there's like a nice tender spot there and that's on the inside of the heel closer towards the toes. Now, there is something that often gets misdiagnosed as plantar fasciitis. And what it is, it's the adhesion of two tendons. And it's one tendon that flexes your big toe and one that flexes your, your toes all together. And it's in your medial arch under your navicular bone. And I don't expect you to know that. It's one of your bones under your inside arch of your foot. And the way to look at it is you want to kind of just feel around, feel around, feel around, and see if you've got a sore spot just below your ankle bone. Like, so going from your ankle bone down to where your arch is, and then kind of going a little bit further towards your toe there. See if there's something on that line between underneath your ankle headed towards your big toe. If you feel a knot there and you feel some soreness there, that is not plantar fasciitis. That is known as the master knot of Henry. And it's, it's adhesion of tendons that flex your big toe and one that flexes the digits that cross there. They're all crossing. And so this is a classic case of fascial adhesions. Now you might be going, what the heck is fascia? And what's plantar fasciae? All these fascial words. So fascia is tissue. It's our wrapping. It's what allows our muscles and tendons to glide, but also to help and keep them in, in place. It's kind of like a wrapping. I like to think of it as wrapping. And it's in between your skin. So it's just under your skin and above your muscle. And in the case of the master knot of Henry in your foot... It's, it's really the wrapping to keep those two tendons in place. And it normally should be there, but it shouldn't be the, so sticky. And really, think of it this way. It's going to sound kind of gross, but think about chicken, right? And if you've seen the skin on chicken and you take the skin off and then you've got that shiny layering on the outside of the, the chicken, in some places it's thicker than others, right? Well, where that thickening is, that is your fossil tissue that's wrapping in a particular area that needs more support. Other areas that might be thinner. Anyway, the body is going to create more density of the fascial tissue when we have more strain in that particular area on the body. So you can imagine if your arch is collapsing and your arch on the medial side of your foot, the inside of your foot, is your primary when you're weight bearing and stabilizing arches. Well, heck yeah, you're going to produce more tissue there because you're trying your body's going to try to stabilize itself same thing goes for any area of the body that there is more tension your body is primed it's super smart it's primed to lay down more collagen more tendon attachment so so more tendinous material if you use a particular muscle more than others that's how archaeologists figure out what people did for a living they can look at the 
thickenings into the bone because your Achilles tendon, that tendon on the back of your calf attaches into your heel. And people can tell if someone was more of a jumper than just a walker or strider for that matter, just based on how strong that attachment is. The same thing goes with your fascial tissue, the wrapping around your muscles and tendons. It is this wrapping that if we have more strain in a particular area or we have an area that's not moving like it should, it's going to get gunked up. It's going to get sticky. And this is a case in which we can help big time if we can work on our fascial tissue. So let's go back to the basics here for a moment in terms of looking at how the heck does this stuff work? Like what, how would you treat a heel with acupuncture? So, or how would you truly treat an arch with acupuncture? Well, acupuncture in and of itself, when you put a needle into the body, it's going to create a wound message to the body because a needle going in is a wound, right? And the message is going to say, well, come bring some blood. We need some blood. We need some white blood cells. We need some good inflammatory markers. Something's going on here. And so it's a way to tell the body to focus on that area. Because if we're eating crappy food and we're stressed out and let's say we haven't been sleeping, our body doesn't necessarily know that we have collapsed arches and that's what it needs to focus on. It's going to go for the more critical stuff like fix the digestion, work on the nervous system, try to keep you calm. So a lot of times, the more distal something is from the core of your body, the more the body tends to forget about it, which is sad because your feet are so important. If I had to like categorize in terms of health for the body, gut and feet, and then, you know, some sequential stuff up from there, but gut and feet, if your feet are healthy, gosh, you can have a whole new world. So let's talk a little bit more about acupuncture. If acupuncture is going to be used to help to lift a collapsed arch, and keep in mind that this is someone that's acquired a collapsed arch, not someone that was born with it. There's not much you can do when someone's born with flat feet. That's kind of a case in which you more or less need orthotics to help you to have somewhat of an arch. Now, granted, if you have an acupuncturist who's trained to work with kids, you, you maybe you could change this. I don't know. I haven't seen that. But in the conference that I attended recently, I saw folks who had very minimal arches gain arch lift in just one session. Were they completely fixed in one session? No, but I saw change. And I've also seen change now in my own practice. And it's quite impressive. So the way acupuncture can help to lift an arch is that you have to strategically get the needles into the fascial tissue, not the muscles, but the fascial tissue of the feet. And in particular, the medial arch and the long arch, which are on both sides of the feet. Now, what you do is you're going to be trying to lift the medial arch, the one on the inside. So you put two needles in, one that's going to be in front of the ankle and one that's going to be a little bit behind the ankle bone. And it's going in tissue, not the muscle, so it's a little bit more superficial. And you're going to turn the needle so that it catches in the fascial tissue and then you're going to lift it up, which sounds kind of crazy. Like, oh my God, this would be the most painful thing in the universe. I tried it myself. Um, I had someone do that on me and it, it wasn't that painful. I mean, yeah, the needles, you feel them go in, but after they're lifting, it feels incredible. And after the needles come out, oh my goodness, you, I've never been aware of my arches so much as it, I was in those moments after the treatment. It was incredible. Now, the other side of the treatment is working on the outside of the foot, so the pinky side of the foot, and working to just really working to elongate that muscle there. That muscle and that tissue is stuck in a shortened state because the arch fell in, the inside muscles on the inside of your foot are elongated and stuck elongated while the ones on the outside are stuck short, which causes imbalances all the way up the leg. And we'll talk about that in terms of the lower leg in a minute. Now, the outside of the foot, you put a needle not too far from the pinky toe. Um, as you come down from the pinky toe, there's like this big nub just below there. And then there's another one just below your outside ankle bone. 
and you needle the needles towards each other and wrap into the fascial tissue. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull on both of those needles as if you're elongating the fascial tissue and the muscle. And it's pretty cool. It sounds torturous, but the reason I wanted to do this podcast is to let people know that it's not. It's it, Yeah, you feel the needle for a minute, but after that, it's good. It's all good. Don't be afraid of acupuncture. Yes, they're needles. Yes, you might feel them, but you tend not to over time. And in fact, they you tend to be the most relaxed you'd ever imagine with a bunch of needles in yourself. It's weird, but I'm telling you, amazing stuff. So with the needles in the arch area and the needles in the lateral side of the foot area, your practitioner is going to work on lifting on the medial side and stretching on the outside. And at the same time, you're going to be laying on a table. Same time, they're going to put some needles in your anterior tibialis and your posterior tibialis motor points. Bonus, if you remember where those muscles are, but don't worry, I'll tell you. So they're going to be putting some needles in the front of your lower leg and the medial side, so inside of your lower leg. These muscles are the sling that help to lift the arch. And in addition to that, with any acupuncture treatment, we're going to work on your constitution, meaning, you know, if you're someone that's struggling with fatigue or struggling with insomnia, we're going to put some points in to help that too. And after a half hour of hanging out on the table, then needles come out and you go down and you walk around and see what you've got there. And honestly, I was impressed. I felt like I had a whole new foot. I'm not kidding. And I don't brag about a lot of different things, but this just blew my mind. And so that's why I had to do this podcast because I feel like everyone should know that acupuncture can really help in the case of fallen arches, so pes planus, and in the case of folks who have had plantar fasciitis for a long time because a lot of times with plantar fasciitis, these same muscles are going to be in locked up positioning and needing to be released. So it's mind blowing. It's cool. Okay. So earlier in the podcast, I talked about heel issues and I talked about how you might need something called heel decompression. What the heck is that? So that is if you stand and you look and you notice that your hips are basically causing you to lean forward. So despite thinking you're standing straight up, you're actually leaning forward and you can see your hips kind of more anterior than the rest of your body. And if this is happening to you, or if you have chronic heel pain that's kind of on the outside of your heels um, instead of on the bottom of the heel, kind of on the long the, the sides of your Achilles tendon, you might be a really great candidate for something called heel decompression. Now I'm going to teach you how to work on it yourself, but you can also have practitioners help you just like an acupuncturist or a massage therapist who knows about myofascial work. And perhaps you could throw out the name Robert Schleib. He's kind of like the godfather of fascial tissue and see if maybe they know a little bit about that. I don't know. Um, I will have links though, like I said before, at my website on my podcast notes at drjkrausnd.com. So head over there. It's episode 115. Now let's get to business on how you're going to work on your heel on your own to kind of help with things. So take your foot out. And if you are listening to this and you don't have access to your foot, that's okay. You can replay this or I am going to put a video and a link in my podcast notes, but I'll also do a link on my YouTube channel. So check that out. It's Doc J. Kraus ND. That is my YouTube channel. But what you should do is sit somewhere comfortable so that you can access your heel easily. And I'm just going to move myself over here and talk you through it while I'm doing it to myself. And so you take your, your index finger and your pointer finger there. And is the index finger and the pointer finger the same thing? That's probably a blonde question. So your second and your third finger, sorry, blonde moment. And you take those two fingers and you go from behind your ankle on either side of that big tendon there, your Achilles tendon, and you slide your fingers downward. Just gently, enough pressure that you feel it, but not enough that you're like torturing yourself. And you can use coconut oil just to make things a little bit easier. You can use almond oil, olive oil, doesn't matter. If you wanna do that, you just don't wanna use a lot. Because the idea is to take like a minute from behind your ankle on either side of that Achilles tendon and just slide your fingers down. And do three moves there, three passes. 
you want to be feeling like the sense of like you're stretching taffy. And if you've never stretched taffy before, it would be just like you're just stretching the tissue with your fingers a little bit. And then the next step, what you want to do is put your fingers right underneath your ankle bones. Put the two fingers underneath your inside of your ankle bone and two fingers underneath the outside of your ankle bone and gently move from there towards your heel on an angle. Kind of like a 45 degree angle, if you will, or just trying a diagonal till you get to your heel. This one might hurt a little bit, but don't, you know, press enough so that you feel like you're just taking your tissue and spreading it a little bit. And then the last one, go underneath, so put both fingers again underneath your ankle, inside and outside, and then slide your fingers down till you get right to the bottom of your heel, where you're gonna feel like the base of your heel on the inside arch area and the outside arch area. And if you don't have an arch, that's okay. Just the inside of where it would be. And then what you wanna do is take those two fingers and pull them back towards you. So you're gonna go back towards your Achilles tendon. And you do that three times. This is heel decompression. And yes, it's much better if someone else does it for you because they can get a little bit more pressure, but this can help you, especially if you notice in the mirror that your pelvis is tilting forward. It happens a lot to flat-footed folks. So take a look and see if that is your issue. This is a big deal. And it's something that, say you don't have any practitioners nearby you, but you're suffering with heel pain and you notice that these things, you know, your, your calves are tight, your heel is, is compressed because basically your pelvis is going forward and your heels slamming forward into your bones. You can do something about this at home, even if you don't have an acupuncturist nearby or a massage therapist nearby. Just start working on your spell. Spend a couple minutes a day just working on it. Now, the other side of things that acupuncturists will take care of in terms of whole body treatment is why do we have issues with our feet? Why does the inside of the arch collapse over time if, say, you're not an athlete or say you didn't gain weight? Well, in the Chinese world, we have 14 highways on our bodies, and the arch is related to the spleen, so your digestive system channel, but it's also related to your kidney channel. And your kidneys are like your batteries. They're what keep you going. And the more stressed you are, the more fatigued you are, the more someone needs to work on your kidneys. If not you, then your acupuncturist should help you. Now also the digestive channel, the spleen, which might sound weird because we don't tend to think about the spleen as being part of digestion, but in the Chinese world it is. And it's related to things like your stomach, you're having trouble with stomach issues. You know, you can't eat as much as you used to. You don't have appetite. You might find that you're gaining weight easily. You might find that you don't tolerate cold foods. These are all signs that something's up with your digestive system. Maybe you're finding that you're getting more varicose veins. That's also linked in this department. And also, Look at the inside of your foot. Do you have more varicose veins, like little purple? Sometimes for people, you can see little purple spider veins starting in there. That is a deficiency of your spleen. The number one thing that you can start doing right now if you have digestive deficiencies, start drinking ginger tea. Add ginger, fresh ginger, by the way, to your, your foods. Start warming things up a little bit for yourself if you're having some issues in that case. Now, if you're having acid reflux, or you're having chronic burping, you're having you know, just a warm, acidy stomach feeling, you might have some issues going on with your stomach chi. And this can be related to foot issues as well, and in particular, having really tight shins and a really tight lateral upper leg. Now, I told you I was gonna get into the hamstrings and the quads and all those guys, and now I'm getting into the upper leg. So here's a fun little trick. I want you to take your hands right now, if you can, and put one hand, so bend your knee, just have your knee flat with your foot flat on the floor. Put one hand to the, so just above your knee to the right side out to the lateral side of your knee and one to the inside of your knee. And just kind of feel the muscle tissue and see if you can feel the difference between those two. If the inside of your knee feels really soft and mushy, 
that's spleen chi deficiency. You've got some digestive issues going on. If the outside of your knee feels really tight, you've got some hip issues and you've got some tight upper leg issues. Chances are your lower legs are also going to be super tight too. And when that's tight, you might have some rebellious stomach chi, meaning you might have stomach pain. You might have acid reflux. You might have ulcers. And so these are things that can be worked with with acupuncture too. And taking it to, to the other level of thinking about how are your physical signs showing up as internal warning signs and what we can do to help balance your body out. So there's much more to acupuncture than just stick the needles in and expect results. It's, it's quite an art and can be extremely useful for folks that have flat feet, have a tendency towards Achilles tendonitis or Achilles ruptures. And after going to this conference, I was really impressed to, and really wanted to share with all of you that there are things that you can do to help with your flat feet. So I hope I've given a little basic rundown and maybe got you a little excited about trying out some <laughs> acupuncture here for your feet. I will have a YouTube video that's going to show the heel decompression, also take you through kind of what I talked about today in the podcast. So head on over to my YouTube channel, Dr. Krause and D, and check out those videos. They'll be posted just as soon as this podcast goes up. So check them out. Let me know what you think. As always, I'd love to hear from you guys as to what you thought of my podcast and what you would like in terms of more information because I love to answer questions. Just thought that since this info was so exciting, I had to share it with you and so here it is. Well, everybody, you have all survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Hey everybody, Dr. Janine Krauss here. If you liked what you heard today, then head over to drjkrausnd.com to find my free resources and information to know when I post something new that's juicy that you might want to check out. Plus, head over to where you get your podcasts and like, subscribe, and write a review to help get the word out about me and help others at the same time to find me. It really does help and I really appreciate all of your reviews.